A few weeks ago, we came to Taiwan looking for a safe haven amid the COVID-19 pandemic. We spent two weeks under mandatory home quarantine in a small apartment in Taipei, in northern Taiwan. After that, we rented a car and drove almost 400 kilometers south, choosing the city of Kaohsiung as our base for the coming weeks. Good morning, welcome to Kaohsiung. We arrived here two days ago, we did a small road trip all the way from Taipei to Kaohsiung in the south of Taiwan. We drove all the way here because to us it didn't make a lot of sense in the current situation nope. to stay in the most international city in all of Taiwan, being Taipei. Yes. So we chose to come to Kaohsiung because there's a little bit more nature here and we think it's possible to have a pretty good time here while yep. still social distancing and today we're going to put that theory to the test. Yes. Today we're going to explore the area of the Lotus Pond here. It's a district where we are staying. Our apartment block, well it's just, you can't behind see, it's behind those trees. Like, Less than 100 meters from here, and less than 100 meters from here is the Lotus Pond. So we're very, very close to it. It's supposed to be a very nice scenic area with lots of nature, some temples, some a pagodas, park and all those kind of things. So that's what we're gonna explore today, and we're taking you along with us. I'm experiencing a sort of identity crisis here. I think as a pedestrian, I'm not supposed to walk here because this is the bike lane. So we're gonna move over there, or I can pretend to be a bike. Ring, here's, the, ring. here's the pond. It's called the Lotus Pond. But to me, if you look at the size, it is more of a lake. <laughs> they didn't go for like the straightest road or the straightest path to the opposite side because it's all like this, like zigzagging across the across this first little part of the pond here. Looks pretty nice actually, and it is super close to our apartment. Like it's less than a five-minute walk. You can do a complete walk around the lake. It's just, I think, seven kilometers, which is like a perfect, nice little walk of about two hours. Probably will be a bit more because we're filming and there's also like loads of temples and pagodas and other stuff here. out here going for a little walk since we got here like four days ago we have not been outside i think at all then we went for groceries yeah we went grocery shopping and that was about it so and the only thing we knew about kaohsiung so far is that it was a lot of green because when you looked on the map there were a lot of green in the surrounding area and also the weather is a lot warmer here than it was in taipei in taipei it's currently like between 10 and 15 degrees celsius here is between 25 and 30. so T-shirt weather Two thumbs instead up. of sweater weather. Well, I would show you my second thumb, but then I, the camera I'll would fall on the ground. I'll so. give you one. It's so funny because there are people in every little nook and cranny of the park here. If you just look around like this, it's like we're completely alone. And I mean, there aren't many people here. I was a little bit afraid about that because it is a Saturday. But then when you go more towards the shore of the pond and you walk down this little island a little bit, there are people everywhere just fishing and hanging out. It's like they all made their small little self-isolation spot, their private area here next to the pond. Quack, 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 quack. I'm a duck at the pond. <laughs> you gonna go into the water? Oh yeah, I'm a duck, that's what ducks do. Please, by all means, go be a duck. To be honest, I think he's not really a duck. He's just posing as a duck. Haven't seen him near water too much lately. Even the bathtub in our apartment, he hasn't used it. He just takes a shower like normal humans. So I have my doubts. Oh, fellow ducks, it's my family. Wait, I'm coming for you. Oh yeah, there they are. Behind us is the beautiful Confucius temple right here on the northern side of the lake. The lake was opened actually in 1951. It's a man-made lake. Uh, it's about one and a half kilometers by 500 meters. So it's, it's quite big for uh, It is a man. lake, it's not a pond. Yeah, I mean, what's the definition of a pond on a lake? It's, it's, a, it's a plague. 
It's a plague. It's a plague. Yeah. We'll call it a plague. Anyway, behind me you have the Confucius Temple. The uh, Confucius Temple actually dates back to the 17th century. It was originally in another location and they moved it when they built a pond. But this is not really the original temple anymore because yeah, most parts were destroyed already before because it fell in disrepair and ruins. Most of the temple dates back to the 70s, if I'm not mistaken. We weren't really planning on visiting this temple, but it seems pretty nice from the outside. And it looked like there's no one in there. I mean, we thought it was closed, but the gates are open and you can see there are only three or four people in there. So we're going to check it out. So before they let you into the temple, they measure your temperature. There are a few people sitting at a desk there. It's not so funny because they just come like beep and then they're like, okay, you don't have a fever, you can come in. Maybe it's like in the movie Man in Black where they just erase part of your memory actually. Who oh knows God. what they did to us? What happened in the last five minutes? I don't know, do you have any recollection? No, nothing happened. I can't recall anything interesting happening. As you can see, there's Less than 10 people here, three people over here. This is and amazing. About six, seven people over there, and that's it. That's oh, all. Look at how beautiful this place is. Yeah. It's really very similar to some of the temples that we visited last year when we were in Beijing. And I especially love the, the dragon sculptures that they have on those beams here. Basically, there's dragon sculptures everywhere here in the woodwork, in the ceiling as well. And those little round circles over there. Yeah, it definitely reminds me of what we saw last year. We were in Beijing and other places. But what you just said, that is not a coincidence. Here it says on this very informative little plaque that the Dutch Sheng Ho, which is this one, is the main building in the temple. And the architectural style emulates the Hall of Supreme Harmony of the Forbidden City in Beijing. So it's deliberately built in the same style. Oh, it cool. does look quite similar. It's all brand new. Yeah. I mean, it's like it was built yesterday. You're saying it's dates back to the 70s, but it is so well maintained it's in here. It's incredibly well maintained. And it's really cool that we can enter here because in the Forbidden City, you cannot enter into the temples. And this is the plaque of Confucius in the center. I don't know uh, what it says, but it's probably a quote by Confucius, I would guess. I think we can Google Translate it. Let's try. Can you give me your phone? Probably too small to do it from this distance. Yeah, that says something. I think the characters are maybe a bit too stylized for Google Translate to recognize yeah. them easily. We tried. We tried. We tried. <laughs> if anybody knows what it is saying, let us know in the comments down below. We would be interested to really know what it says. That was a nice break. Let's continue our journey across the pond. Uh, just gonna continue walking here. I really, I must say, it's really, really nice to be outside in such a scenic area like this i mean just look at it look at the pond lake whatever I mean, it's, it's really beautiful tranquil there's like a few people here but i think I mean, we've been here for about an hour now i think we've seen less than 50 people in total and it's really really a big area so after spending so much time in indoors and in type area did the quarantine we went outside a little bit we're still like middle of the city center now very nice tranquil area i can feel the body starting to be relaxed yeah, I mean, it's been a stressful period for us, so it's for nice everyone. to be able to, yeah, for everyone, of course, but for us as well. And it's nice to finally be able to relax a bit and just walk around and enjoy the nature and, ooh, place where they sell coffee. Let's go. What I really, really love about this park is that it's not just a lake or a pond or whatever you want to call it. There's this temple, there's, it's, it's very, very varied and that makes it especially nice. So here there seems to be, did that lady just have a rabbit? There's a rabbit sitting on the chair. Oh yeah, she has her pet rabbit sitting on a chair next to her. I mean, why not? It's, it's as good as any pet. Anyway, it has a little it's bit better of... than a pet elephant sitting on a chair next to you. It has a little bit of everything, including this little coffee place. Or a place. pet lion. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. So a few days ago, they put in place some new regulations here in Taiwan for the social distancing. And that includes the fact that restaurants have to be able to accommodate People staying one and a half meters apart from each other inside. It's pretty easy here to do the social distancing. Yeah, I mean, There's a lot of space in between the tables. There's at least three, four meters in between all the tables, so very, very easy. Let's see what they have here. Staying safe, people, staying safe. Staying safe. We've got a nice view across the pond here. In the, in the distance, you can see the pagodas over there. Really, really nice. I love this place. What have you done? 
I ordered a passion fruit with yogurt drink. So I was thinking, well, I'll get a smoothie with like a nice passion fruit flavor. I get this ice cream looking ice cream looking thing like that's filled to like more than it can handle. But I cannot complain about this. Cannot complain about this at all. Mm. What do you have over there? So I have something of a local thing here in Taiwan. This is bubble tea. So it's tea with some milk and brown sugar added in because who doesn't like a little bit of sugar? And there are bubbles in there. And normally, if I stir it, you will start to see, oh, yeah, I can see them. the bubbles. So that is also why the straw is pretty wide because the bubbles have to be able to pass through. But they have a very gel-like texture to them. And when you bite down on them, they have a very strong tea flavor. There's like 10 of them in my mouth right now. <laughs> Time for some uh, lunch here. We ordered some eggs by the liquid smoke salmon because I guess we're in the mood for some Western food, for some typical breakfast food that we're used to. And I'm so happy with our choice. It looks so good. Anyway, we're gonna enjoy our food. See you in a bit when we uh, continue our walk across the pond. Life is a winding road. No telling where it goes Driving through days and nights Won't stop for traffic lights And I I really wanna know, really wanna know So we had a really, really good lunch. The yeah. food was as good as it looked. Yeah, it was really, really good. But it, it was also slightly weird. It was slightly weird, I mean we respected all the local rules, we disinfected our hands. Several we, times. We wore a face mask, except when we were eating, of course, because yeah, it's not so easy to eat. Uh, we every... respected social distancing, but still it felt a little bit weird and slightly worrying to be there. But... Taiwan has been very, very early in adopting a lot of preventative yeah. measures. Not gonna dive into all of those right now. If you're interested in that, watch a previous video, but they, they have very few cases. To date, they have about 380 yeah. cases. Yesterday, for example, they only had two new cases, both which were imported. Imported from so overseas, I mean, people were joining from overseas. The risk of getting it is very, very low, but still, psychologically, it feels very strange. Yeah. What, what do you guys think? I mean, would you do it when you were here? Would you, do you think what, it's smart or when, not? Or? When you can keep your distance. So we've now arrived at the Dragon and Tiger Pagodas. Yes. These are two beautiful pagodas. Uh, we walked, well, this is actually the southern side of the uh, lotus pond. Opposite uh, from where we were. Opposite from where we were. So we walked all the way to the other side. Uh, what we passed, we passed by a beautiful big statue. Oh no, apparently we're wrong. This is a spring and autumn pavilion. And the ones over there in the back, over there, <laughs> they are the tiger and dragon pavilions. So these are summer, the spring. <laughs> This is confusing. This is the winter and times. summer pavilion. No, no. It's a Hi, spring and autumn pavilion over there, the tiger and dragon. This is really, really nice with these two pagodas here. Now you can see. The other two pagodas in the back as well. This beautiful dragon here. And if you look this way, you can see why it is called the Lotus Pond. There's a bunch of lotus flowers here. It's like a whole field of them. That's our apartment right over there. We are on the 14th floor, so probably somewhere right around there. This obviously is a dragon, dragon and, and tiger, tiger pagoda. pagoda. So now we have the right one. So the previous tiger, no, the previous dragon, where we were, we just closed. And so we're gonna try and walk through this one. It's still open, so. Well, this is not at all what they imagined the inside of a dragon to look like. No, well, I always wondered though what the inside of a dragon would look like. It ate a lot of locals, like a lot. Looks like they've been here for a while. And so I emerge from the depths of the bottle of the dragon. Emerging from the head of a tiger is a bit more gracious than from the butt of a dragon. So I uh, came back this way. This is about the halfway point, so we're in the middle. Like This is the most southern point, and we started well, pretty much on the most northern point. But I think these were like the main sides, because this is pretty much where all the beautiful 
sides are, all the special things, the temples, pagodas, all those kind of things. I don't think there's a lot on that side, but we need to head back that way anyway. This part of the park, it has really an open, it has a really open view of the lake, which you yeah. can see right there. It's pretty tranquil, not that many people. No, indeed, it's like a nice path where you can do some bicycling, bicycling some people running right here. We are going to end this video here. We are yep. currently walking back to our apartment, which we will show you in one of the next videos. Yeah, we're going to make a video on our beautiful apartment. It's really nice. We hope you enjoyed this video. We really enjoyed our first time outside yeah. in Kaohsiung. First time coming outside here in Kaohsiung. If you like this video, please leave a big thumbs up. Subscribe if you want to follow the rest of our time here in Taiwan. We really appreciate you watching and we'll see you in the next one. Quack quack. Bye bye.